Playoff football returns to the Bay Area in two weeks. With the NFC's top seed secured ahead of the regular season finale, the San Francisco 49ers closed out the 2023 schedule at home against the Rams while resting a number of key playmakers. We'll break that game up, the plan for the bye week, and sit down with tight end George Kittle on this episode of 49ers Live. This is 49ers Live presented by WebEx by Cisco. I'm Lindsay Polaris. In a low stakes week 18 game, head coach Kyle Shanahan prioritized health and playoff readiness, opting to rest QB1 Brock Purdy and injured players while also capping the snap counts of starters that did suit up. The Rams, with no possibility of moving up to the number five seed, did the same. Their vets, Matt Stafford, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, and others sat out of this one. Backup QB Sam Darnold got the start for SF, and early on with the 49ers' nearly full arsenal of offensive weapons did a lot of good things. He led back-to-back -to -back touchdown scoring drives to open the game, punching in the second score himself on a QB sneak. He connected on seven of nine passes for 73 yards, and he went on to close the day with a 96.5 passer rating. Rotational players who saw extra playing time took advantage of the opportunity as well. Safety Taylor Hawkins notched his first career interception in his NFL debut, and rookie defensive lineman Robert Beal Jr. got, his home, got home on Carson Wentz for his first sack. The 49ers fell short in the finale, 21 to 20. Following the loss, this is what Kyle Shanahan had to say about his team headed into the bye week. I mean, our goal was to get the number one seed. That, that was our first and foremost goal. Um, we did. It was just a little bit weird this last week. Um, but I like how our guys handle it. I uh, loved how our year went. I mean, we set out to do this, and um, I was real happy with a number of guys. I thought guys got better throughout the year. But as, as our players have been saying, we, we still feel um, our, our best football's forward. And that's kind of tough to generate when you're not going through these games. Um, but that's why we got to be so locked into these practices and just how we clean things up and make sure no matter what happens, no matter who comes here in a couple of weeks and no matter what type of game it is, whether it's a shootout, a game of field goals, um, whatever it is that uh, we're up for whatever it takes to win it. The 49ers are in playoff mode, awaiting their next opponent. San Francisco will play the lowest seeded team to make it out of Super Wild Card weekend. They'll face the Rams, Packers, Eagles, or Buccaneers. The team will practice this week, and eyes will be glued to the games come Sunday. And we'll hear from one of the members of the 49ers coming up. Joining us to recap the 2023 regular season and look ahead to the NFL playoffs, we've got the people's tight end, Mr. George Kittle. Hi. So, George, uncharted territory for you and this 49ers team. You clinched the NFC's in top seed, mm -hmm. Week 17, low stakes game in Week 18. Yeah. And you're not as stressed? Or what was the feeling headed into the finale? Um, definitely less stress when you, know, when you don't have the pressure of this. is Because, like, every game throughout the whole season is, like, a must-win game. And, and I know it, it's not like if you lose early, you can kind of make it up later and stuff like that. But you treat every game like it's a must-win. And when it's this one... It's like, we want to win, but if we lose, it's like, well, we're good. Like, we have the one seed, but at the same time, you want to keep the mindset of, we got to go out there and play at a high level because the only way to stay good at football and get better is to play the game. And so that's why, you you know, most of our starters played in that game was just to not let the rust settle in just because we knew we had this upcoming week off as well. And so, um, yeah, that's about it, yeah. You've been the number one seed before back in 2019, but yes. how does this compare to that when you literally had to go down to the final play of the season in order to clinch that top seed and the NFC West all in one? Um, definitely less stressful. That wasn't stressful at all. It was wild. Um, yeah, I mean, having to you know, win, uh, was it the last game of the decade, right? Was that it? So. Yeah, last game of the decade in Seattle against a rival. And to, like, to do that was awesome. Um, and because like, we, did, you know, we had to play that game, we had to go all out on that game, like the following week, I wouldn't say it was less stressful. It was just more of a, hey, we're just going to be on the field and moving around. So like, kind of, I don't want to say walk through, but like kind of jog through stuff. And because we had, you know, a lot of guys not play very much or not play at all this game, you know, I feel like we'll move around a little bit more, might put the pads on, like just, you know, stay crisp, stay with our, you know, we're executing at a high rate. So like just keep the things we've been doing well and just go out there and play a little bit of football this week. With no playoff implications outside of staying healthy in week 18, yeah. head coach Kyle Shanahan said that, he wanted the week to be focused on getting better. Mm -hmm. How did the team get better last week? Um, well, I would say that, you know, we, we ran the ball well. 
we did our routes and all that stuff. It's more of a like sharpening the sword, I would say. Like, hey, we're doing a lot of things really well. Let's just either you can take a step forward or let's just continue to do those things really well. Like, uh, just like you don't want to take a step back. You don't want to say, hey, hey, A, B, like you're not playing, you're not playing, you're not playing. And then the guys kind of check out and like just not practice very well, like got jog through everything. Like you don't want that. You want guys to go out there and still like go out and perform at a high level, compete against each other because that's how you stay good at football and that's how you get better. So I think that was more his mindset. He just wants you to stay in that competitive mindset and that competitive nature. Without playing in the finale, there mm -hmm. were a lot of people on this team that accomplished a lot of really big things. Mm -hmm. Going to talk to you about your quarterback first, Brock Purdy. Yes. First time pro bowler, set a new single season franchise passing record, also finished first in the NFL in passing yards per attempt. Like the list goes on and on. Yeah. One year as a starter, where has his game gone in 2023? Wow. Um, you know, I just... When he came in, you know, against the Dolphins last year, he played at a high level for us. And then he's just continuing to get more comfortable, more confident, continue to get better. And then I just keep seeing that throughout this entire year. Like each week, he just continue like, wow, that was a really good throw. Like, that was awesome. Like you just see that type of stuff on the tape every time you see it. And um, really like it's, you kind of grow accustomed to like, he doesn't really miss ever. And like, that's kind of my favorite thing. He does a really good job of protecting his players. And like, he never misses. Like. His, you know, his pass rating is always really high because he doesn't throw a lot of, you know, uh, incompletions. He doesn't throw the ball away very much because he's usually on time, you know, three-step drop, hitch, throw. Like, he just steps and throws. He's just so clean. He's efficient. And he's just got this confidence. And I remember, like, he had a quote that said, um, you know, like, you have to have no fear when you're out there. Like, you have to be smart with the ball, but you have to have no fear. And for him to play at the level he's playing, you can see that he has no fear. Like, he is just ripping it and stepping into it. And he does, like... Like he knows where the ball is going to go and he's just confident in our ability as playmakers around him that we're going to protect the ball and make him right. He's not the only one that's playing confident. So are you. You are also you. got your fifth Pro Bowl nomination voted into the Pro Bowl. Um, just what has this year meant to you and then to know that you've still got so much in front of you and so does this team? Um, yes, we do have a lot in front of us. And uh, while like personal accolades are awesome and you want everyone to have them because everyone's trying to build up their own resume of playing in the NFL, um, at the end of the day, like our whole team, all they care about is winning. And so it's very fun to be on a team with that mindset. Um, and, you know, when you're on a team with nine pro bowlers, that's awesome because that just means your best players are playing at a high level. Um, but for me, Percy, like I go into every season, my goal is um, a thousand yards, 10 touchdowns, pro bowl, all pro. Like those are four things that are my goals. And um, you know, and then the, the number one goal on top of that is to win. And so if I'm winning and achieving those goals, that's awesome. Um, you know, if we're winning and I'm not achieving those goals, but I'm still playing at a high level, I'm okay with that. Like the stats are like, they're just, that's what I want to get to. If I don't, it is what it is. But like, I always want to get to the pro, but I always want to be an all pro. And so like you just put in the work throughout the whole off season, throughout the whole season, just for a chance to, you know, get to that level. And so very excited about it. But like you said, you know, we have a lot of other things to play for. The challenge now is to stay physically ready, mentally sharp with 20 plus days between suiting up for games, which is wild. Uh, how are you staying sharp during that time? What's the day to day routine that helps with that when you're not playing games? Um, catching footballs, uh, watching film, just watching football, just staying engaged with it. You just don't want to like the worst thing is like sit down on the couch, kick your feet up and just like zone out for seven days. Like, that's the last thing you want to do. So, like, you want to stay on top of your business. You want to, like I said, whether it's catching the football, whether it's working out, working on your cardio, just trying to be as healthy as you possibly can, um, focus on your recovery. Like, as long as guys are in and out of the building, as long as guys are still focused on football and they're not just, like, completely checked out, we're going to be just fine. Like, you just don't want to completely, like, just relax and not think about it. That being said, this Sunday you aren't playing in a football game, so how much time are you dedicated to watching all those NFC matchups that – have a direct effect on you guys in a week. You know what's crazy? I was pretty sure in 2019, I didn't watch any of the games. That's interesting. I know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch it because, like, trust me, like, I'm going to get the film right away mm -hmm. and be able to watch it as soon as we know who we're playing. Um, but besides that, like, in 2019, I didn't really watch it. But my wife loves watching football so much that it'll 100% be on our TV the entire day. And so I will be probably watching all the games because she makes me. NFC and AFC or just... Just the NFL. No, she watches She watches every game. Everything. She, yeah, she's a monster. Good, good job, Claire. You're going to make me watch more <laughs> tape. I appreciate that. So if it weren't for Claire, would you be scouting those teams ahead of time, you think? 
I might watch the tape on my like on my iPad, but you know, I I watch football sometimes, but not all the time. Like at the, in the playoffs, so I do like I enjoy watching my friends that I know across the league, which is really fun. You know, I like watching the tight ends, some of the quarterbacks that I'm friends with, um, you know, off the line. But besides that, it's just like uh, you know, I, I do a lot of football, so sometimes I like to give my mind a break, and then I'll go revisit that same game later that night. Thanks for taking the time during this bye week. Of course, nowhere else I'd rather be. I also caught up with Matt Mayoko of NBC Sports Bay Area to take a closer look at the injuries and dive into the NFC playoff picture. Matt, welcome to 49ers Live. We're so happy to have you for this recap show. Lindsay, I'm so thrilled to be here because it means that we're recapping the season. Uh, All the games that uh, lead it up, led up to this point are over in the rear view mirror, including week 18. And now the real fun, or I guess for 49er fans, the real stress begins. I think the real stress is probably a good way to word it. But before we move on to playoff mode, let's talk a little bit about week 18. In any other year, a loss to the Rams in the regular season finale would hurt. It would sting. It would mean a lot. In 2023, that was not the case. 49ers were the number one seed as of week 17. So despite taking a loss in that final game of the season, in what ways did the 49ers come out on top? Well, they came came out on top because it doesn't look like uh, there were any significant injuries, you know, injuries that'll carry over into the postseason. And I was going to say in a lot of ways, but probably in every way that was the main goal was just to enter the playoffs in a better spot than where they were when the season, when the regular season ended. So, you know, there seems to be optimism that Eric Armstead will be back or have a good chance of being back. You know, some of the guys that were held out. Uh, due to injuries for uh, week 18, like Christian McCaffrey. I mean, the week leading up to that game against the Rams, he said that he 100% could have played if he needed to play. And then a couple of guys who were late scratches, like George Kittle and Dre Greenlaw, uh, you know, that was more precautionary. And all these things are probably, you know, kind of uh, contingent on just how the next few days, how next week goes, uh, how this week goes, how next week goes. But it, it really looks like uh, the 49ers are in a good spot as far as being able to have all their players available. I guess the only player that I can think of, the starting player, you know, who uh, was injured during the season and who won't be available for the postseason is Talano Hufanga. And and let's let's not sugarcoat. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, he was an all-pro player last year in his first year as a starter. Uh, but I think they feel good about where Jair Brown was, and he missed some games late in the season. He should be back. Um, so they, they kind of covered themselves pretty well as far as having a guy like Logan Ryan, who's played a lot of football, uh, a veteran guy, has a Super Bowl ring in his safe deposit box. Uh I think the 49ers feel good and and have reason to feel good about where they are entering the postseason. Another bright light coming out of that Week 18 game was quarterback Sam Darnold. Hadn't started in almost a year since he was last with the Carolina Panthers. Comes out with the 49ers starters, at least most of them to start the game, leads back-to-back touchdown drives. How meaningful were those Week 18 reps in the case that he should be needed down the line? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it shows that, um, you know, that, that season isn't lost. I mean, obviously, you don't ever want to go to your backup quarterback, and especially when your starter is somebody like Brock Purdy, who it will be on the uh, on the very short list of MVP candidates. I mean, I, I would expect him to be one of the finalists for that award. Um, he's had a phenomenal season. And so you're going to take a hit anytime you have to go to somebody else. But, you know, Sam Darnold has a lot of experience in the NFL. He made his 56th career start on Sunday in week 18. And it's it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster for him. Uh, that's probably putting it mildly uh, through his NFL career. Uh, but he had the advantage of coming to the 49ers without a whole lot of expectations. Uh, You know, he wasn't the number three pick in the draft where the entire hopes of a franchise was kind of put on his shoulders 
Um, I thought he played well. You know, I think he made one critical mistake at the end. You know, even if he never steps on the field again, talking about Sam Darnold, uh, th- th- it'll be interesting to see what happens the off- in the offseason. Will Sam Darnold want to return to the 49ers? Will there be a better opportunity for him out there? I don't know. Uh, but I think that what Sam Darnold showed behind the scenes would prompt the 49ers to want him to be back in 2024. You touched upon Brock Purdy. What a tremendous season he had. He finishes as the 49ers single season passing record holder. He was the top vote getter in the Pro Bowl fan vote. Named to the Pro Bowl, also finishes top in passing yards per attempt in the league. Just a tremendous outing for him in 2023. And like you mentioned, on a short list of MVP candidates, the challenge is now to just get him ready for the divisional round. In what ways are the 49ers setting him up for success during this stretch without a, without a game? Well, you know, it's funny, Lindsay, because you know I, I just kind of look back at where he was through the off season, you know, he did not take part in mini camp or OTAs or any of that. Um, he didn't play a whole lot, you know, it, training camp started with him being, you know, practicing two days, sitting out a day. Then when the, the game started, I think he attempted 14 passes in the, in the, in all of the preseason games. I think you're right. It was limited. Yeah. And then in the final preseason game, he attempted nine passes. And then it was 16 days off before the start of the regular season. What happened on the 49ers' first drive to open the season? Brock Purdy and the 49ers marched down the field, and he throws an eight-yard touchdown pass to Brandon Ayuk. Didn't so, skip a beat. <laughs> didn't have any rust. For the first snaps of the regular season after months and months and months of relative inactivity, then I think he'll be just fine after starting 16 regular season games, being under a lot of pressure, and now, you know, having this basically a three week break for him. Lindsay, one of the, you know, how I'm, you always see me, I always see you several hours before game time. Mm-hmm. Um, on Sunday at Levi Stadium, I got there even earlier than the normal because I I wanted to be around and kind of see the the early games. Almost the the moment I mean we I almost knocked him over going through those double swinging doors at Levi Stadium. I don't know if that's something you want to admit, Matt. <laughs> almost, almost. And I said I did knock him over. I wouldn't admit it. <laughs> But the fact that I almost did four and a half hours before game time, mm-hmm. he went into the locker room, got got in his workout attire, and went out there and got a full workout in hours and hours before the game. So the reason I'd say this isn't because I'm bragging that I almost knocked out the quarterback. It's because I'm pointing out that his – his work day, he knew it was going to be limited. You know, the three hours of work that he normally w- would have from 125 to, you know, 425, he wasn't going to have that. He was going to have middle work on the sideline, mm-hmm. listening to the play call, you know, doing all that stuff. But from the physical aspect of it, he wanted to remain sharp by getting in a full day's work. And I think that was the emphasis last week in practice, and that's the emphasis this week in practice from you know guys like Fred Warner. I mean, I could hear Fred Warner out on the practice field reminding his teammates, let's get better today. Fred Warner ended up playing, I think, 11 snaps in that game. Uh, you know, Trent Williams was only out there for the first drive. So a lot of the their top-line players didn't see a whole lot of game action. But to get them ready for the first round, their first round of the playoffs, the divisional round, They took it very seriously of working hard and trying to get better when they knew that they weren't going to be playing much or in the case of Brock Purdy at all in that week 18 game against the Rams. And we'll hear more from head coach Kyle Shanahan later today, but I would say it's safe to assume that that is still very much the focus to continue getting better as they prep for that divisional round. 
who they'll be playing is still very much a mystery. It's going to come out in wild card weekend, but there are four options, the Eagles, the Bucks, the Rams, or the Packers. Which matchup would present the biggest challenge for San Francisco at this point in the season? Well, Liz, I'm going to just flat out say it. It shouldn't matter. It should not matter. The 49ers are a really good team. They're set up well for the postseason. It shouldn't matter who they play. If they take care of business, they're going to be advancing to the NFC Championship game. That said, you know, I think on paper, they'd probably be the biggest favorite against the Packers. Uh, But if they play the Packers, it meant that the Packers went into Dallas and pulled off one of the great upsets. Um, And, uh, you know, I, I think probably 49er fans don't want to see the Rams. I would say that's fair. That's a yeah, fair I, guess. I think that's, <laughs> that's fair. Uh, the, they know each other so well. You know, the, the, the Rams have something. You know, they, they, they finish really hot. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the Rams, what was it? They won. S- I think it's six of their last seven, if I'm correct. Yeah, and I'll say this, Lindsay. The one loss was probably their most impressive game. You know, yeah, they, to the Ravens. <laughs> they went to the Ravens, yeah. played them toe-to-toe. That game went into overtime in Baltimore, and they lost on a punt return for a touchdown. So the Rams are playing really good football um, with all their weapons. I mean, they have you know they still have Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams. They have uh, Matthew Stafford, who uh, – will give the defense some opportunities, no doubt about it, but he can also, we saw week two, you know, how how much he gave the 49ers defense fits. Uh, that's going to be just such an intriguing game on Sunday, seeing how he does against the Lions, uh, going to face his former team. Um, you know, I, I don't know if the Eagles want to play the 49ers. I don't know if the 49ers want to play. I, it, it shouldn't matter, to be shouldn't. honest. It shouldn't matter if if the 49ers take care of business. And, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's I was talking to Fred Warner on the, the 49ers Talk podcast after the game, and he was like, it all comes down to three hours. You know, it's not a mm-hmm. it's not a seven game series. You know, the, the best one and team, done. One and done. The best team doesn't always win, but the best team in that three hour span moves on. And so, I mean, frankly. You know, we all remember Christmas night. Ravens are a really good team. 49ers committed five turnovers, did not get one takeaway in return. Let's face the cold, hard facts here. If the 49ers lose the turnover battle 5 nothing to anybody. It's hard to come back from that. They're going home, yes. That's the exciting part of the postseason. You mentioned that unpredictability. Whatever happens in those three hours – When you look at the NFC playoff picture, who's the team that maybe people are writing off but shouldn't? I don't know. I don't know if you can say anybody's writing anybody off. Um, At least as far as the the team I'm going to mention, because they're the number two seed, the Dallas Cowboys got worked by the 49ers earlier in the season. Week five. Week five. And they didn't look like they even belonged on the same field as the 49ers. Um, if, if there's a rematch in the NFC Championship game, and there are only two teams, the 49ers, if they face them, it can only be in the NFC Championship game. That's mm-hmm. Dallas and Detroit. If if Dallas does what they should do on their home field, where they've been very good, I, I mean, that would set up for an epic NFC Championship game. Uh, yeah, we're calling back to historical matchups on that. If that's the case, I'm wearing the hat, the uh, the Dwight. Yeah, Trump. I mean, uh, you know yeah, that would uh, that would be something. And I, I think that everybody would fall into the trap of oh, the 49ers have the Cowboys number. You know, Cowboys can't beat the 49ers. Um, you know, that, that's a dangerous trap to fall into. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I, like, again, I don't think anybody's saying, oh, the Cowboys don't have a chance. But I do locally kind of get the sense of, oh, the Cowboys can't beat the 49ers. You know, the 49ers are in their heads and all that. I'm just saying you might want to 
pump the brakes on that one. I think the Cowboys still have enough firepower and enough star power on both sides of the ball to to make that a really good game. Well, thank you so much, Matt. And for everybody listening, make sure to also tune in to 49ers Talk. I know I always do. Ahead of game day, lots of good information coming from Matt Mayoko and Jennifer Lee Chan. Thank you so much for joining us in this recap show. All right, Lindsay. Always my pleasure. And thank you, Faithful, for joining us for this 2023 regular season roundup as the 49ers take full advantage of the bye week. Check back to 49ers.com and our YouTube channel for all your updates and content leading up to the divisional round.